Okay, so this is the thing. Um, I was actually waiting for a taxi here from the Shangri-La Hotel uh, towards the MyTech Center today. And it takes them about 30 minutes to get a taxi here. So they advised me to take the Grab app, which is this app over here, to order a taxi. Now the app loads very, very slowly here with the network. And I even got off the VPN because the VPN slows everything down here. It will take some time to go to the MyTech Center today. And this message says that it's actually impossible to download the app. Uh, I'm gonna try it again. If that doesn't work, then I have to get a cab actually. Um, so let's try again. I'm actually very, very, very lucky to catch the guys from APD here. And they they allow me to travel with them to grab the to grab the grab, right? To grab the grab, to grab the grab towards the MyTech Center. Okay, thank you guys. Yeah, see you later. Okay, bye. So, so I am right now on the third day of Critical Communications World here at the MyTech Center in Kuala Lumpur. And the third day is especially reserved to visit companies at the exhibition who have new stuff new critical communication solutions, equipment, services or whatever, I'm going to find out what's new at Critical Communications World. So, follow me and see what's happening at the exhibition floor, right? I actually wanted to kick off with one of the latest products of Sapura. Um, investment in Tetra is still uh, something from today, which is still important. And at Sapura, they managed to produce another mobile device, a new mobile radio for Tetra. And that product is the SCG 2020, 2022? 20, no, just 22. Just 22. Okay, so I got Nigel here who can tell me all about the new device, right? So yeah. where is it? Is this, is it this device? Yeah, so basically on stand we have two versions of our new mobile. So one has a fixed control head here, and then we have one with a separate console. So standard is the same as SRG. So it runs the old existing um, accessories, this is the SRG 3900. But it's now based on the SC platform of radios. So it supports our app space, it now has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in, so it supports over-the-air wireless programming, and it gives us a mobile going forward for Tetra radios. Still dedicated to Tetra, right? Yes, this is a Tetra-only device. We're not putting LTE in this device for now, this is a Tetra-only device. So your contribution to the Tetra industry for the next coming years? Oh, definitely, yeah. So this is our mobile product going forward for Tetra. Let me take a look what's next. Bitium is a company from Finland who produces secure and reliable smartphones. Um, much more actually, but I'm focusing on the smartphone thing. If you haven't seen my latest video on Bitium on the Tough Mobile 2, take a look here, uh, probably, or here. I'm not sure exactly where it pops up, but um, that product has been launched just a few weeks ago, a really exciting product, and I'm right now here at the booth of Bitium. It's a little booth in Critical Communications Finland area at the show, and uh, you guys have produced the world's toughest, no, maybe not the world's toughest, but the world's most secure smartphone. It's ultra secure right right for those end users who need security this is the way to go exactly exactly so we launched a couple of weeks ago the tough mobile 2 so it's a continuation of our tough mobile product family and we are really enhancing the security on the on this on this one so we're building up on the security features that we already had with tough mobile but now with tough mobile 2 it's a bit more sleek product and it has into introducing some new unique features what is the most eye-catching thing on this device maybe something that is the a really unique feature is the privacy mode so we have a specific physical button which you activate by by one click and when you have activated the privacy mode, the camera, the microphone, and Bluetooth are disabled and all the other sensors also reduced in, in, in sensitivity. So kind of making you in stealth mode, so it's difficult to track you after that for all almost right. impossible. Okay, so let's make the world a little bit more secure, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So the big question at this exhibition is, is Motorola Solutions changing the industry or is the industry changing Motorola Solutions focus on this industry? I'm not sure about that. Andrew Sinclair, who is here at the exhibition, is able to give me a little bit more insight. This company has made a significant change, right? 
So there must be a very good idea behind it, is it? Well, it is what you're really seeing is a strategic shift within the company. You know, Motorola will always be uh, primarily a land mobile radio company and a, a communications company. Uh, but about two years ago, we decided to make the shift and really build the end-to-end -end software suite for the command center. And we saw that because of two reasons. One is tremendous growth in that area, but two, the need to integrate the communication system with the workflow that's end-to-end. -end. Uh, and that's required a, a major shift. Uh, we brought in a significant number of people from outside of the industry um, to really bring the best practices from the enterprise space into Motorola. And then as you, if you can see, uh, there's more we have here. You can see how we've built this end-to-end -end suite. Everything from incident awareness through incident management to post-incident resolution. But when you look at it from a strategic point of view, Motorola is not only um, doubling down on the command center, but building the entire end-to-end -end suite, which means we can participate in every single role. But more importantly, we're improving efficiency and public safety. And efficiency equals life safe. You didn't prepare? You didn't prepare anything? No. <laughs> okay, Jens, Jens did not prepare anything for this presentation. <laughs> but he doesn't need to prepare anything because you're the CEO. You should know everything about the latest and greatest of them, and that's the VHF Tetra radio. It sure it? is. And Why we, VHF Tetra? Well, VHF is interesting because we, we, we have a lot of requests from that, particularly from Australia, India, Russia. Of course. But yeah. we know, of course, also North America will be interested in, 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 in Tetra and in, in VHF. When did you decide to develop that radio? We decided it a little over 18 months ago. Uh, but development has actually been a lot quicker. So we, we've done it in less than 12 months. Development from scratch until... Because it's... it's, it's, it's <laughs> guys, this is a dumb radio. And it's there. And it's, this is the radio itself, right? It's a joint development with Funktel in Germany. So we are using ah. the base of, a, of, a, of their existing product Funktel. and rebending it into VHF. <laughs> Okay, why did you pick that company? Because they had a very nice size for a radio. Yes. This is one of the smallest sort of, um, radios on the market. And, um, and it's a good development partner for us because they're near where we are. And we, we, we felt the, uh, the way we were thinking, the way we were working together was, uh, was very inducive for, for this development. Okay. And now, so you, you have this radio. Was it also part of a request of one of the customers? It's not, it's not developed for a specific customers. It's developed for, an, for a broader demand. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did try to ask the other uh, vendors like uh, Sephora and others. Uh, and, and they are interested, but they want to see how it goes first. And, and we were happy to take the first step. Because it's the first time exhibited at any show, right? Absolutely. This is the first, first time. This is a launch. World launch of the VHF Tetra Radio by Dam. Sapura is a host of this event and Sapura is from Malaysia and in Malaysia they take things very, very seriously if it comes to critical communications. Does he stream directly into the control room? Yes, yes. and this is the, the radio. This is exactly the way everything is being yeah. organized. Yeah. This is a PTT radio, so push the talk over cellular actually, and, and it, it's kind of heavy, it's really rugged, it, it's, it's metal. You would say this is a cell phone, but that's not completely true, right? Yeah. This is also our newest uh, mini smartphone, uh, Android smartphone with PTT function. Chui Yan is next to me here from Eastcom. Here we launched the, in this show, and this is an outdoor base station. Uh, and you can say it's very small and this is two carriers this is a very sleek design very uh -huh. small actually uh -huh, and, yeah. it, and you say it's a two carrier because yeah. i know systems that are only having one carrier yeah. but you have two carriers right that's yeah. a world first yeah it's a world first so that's yeah. just another great development on tetra and tetra is definitely here to stay for the coming 10 15 maybe even 20 years mm -hmm. with the convergence to other technologies right yeah right Jane. Yes. Good. This is Jane Cross, and and uh, you, you you might know her, you might not know her, but she is from APD, and APD has made a great change, right, over the last what is it year? 
yeah. two years, maybe two years, right? Yeah. From identity change, from the old identity yeah. towards a new identity. We're not talking about products right now, right? Yes, but yeah. we talk about changes in our industry and something new. Well, this is definitely new. Yeah. Tell me all about it. Um, so our brand um, has transformed into something that we want um, to truly connect with people. Uh, we want to set ourselves apart and, and we're not a big corporate company. We're a friendly company that knows our stuff. Um, so what journey we've been on is last week um, we've announced our, our most recent brand development which you've seen um, for the first time here in Asia um, which is where we've launched our new brand so that's involved a little update to our logo to bring us in line with a more modern yeah, and, this, and this is the logo right? This is, this yeah, is the logo yeah, over there. This is our new logo. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we're very proud to keep our name. We're known in the UK and around the world um, as APD so we want to retain that but bring it up to, like, yeah. up to, up to, you know, up to speed and make it fresh. Have you ever heard about hybrid roaming? Well, hybrid roaming is something that has been invented by Airbus Defense in Space. Actually, it is something like roaming between two different networks. And Catalin here at the exhibition at Airbus Defense in Space is able to tell me all about that. What's hybrid roaming? Hybrid roaming means that uh, this uh, beautiful uh, hybrid uh, Tacton Dabat hybrid terminals, they will give you connection, they will give you service as long as you have any uh, connection, Tetra or IP. The main usage is in Tetra. You lose the, you lose the Tetra because you go, let's say, underground or somewhere there is no Tetra. It would automatically start using the same communication groups over the IP, seamless. The end user doesn't have to do anything. Uh, that's interesting because I've never heard about that. That's okay. quite new, right? Yes. I have no Tetra connection because I took the antenna out. Yes. And now this is working. I make you an LTE group call to a Tetra group terminal. All this right. is over the IP. Now I'll show you something really interesting. I cut all the connections from this one. So there is no connection. The terminal is, is no service. You are in a situation where you need to make a emergency call. You make it. And then you connect back to Wi-Fi. As soon as you connect to the Wi-Fi, the emergency call is made automatically. Seamless. Thomas, this is the end of the show. It's half past three right now, so we have a half an hour left. So it's, it's, it's only half an hour left. Your takeaway of the show, one key takeaway. Uh, by the way, Thomas is the head of research for critical communications. It's IHS market, technologies, right? The technology sure. sector. Your takeaway? I think what's really exciting is the emergence of LTE, not just as a standard that replaces um, existing narrowband systems, but something that the market now accepts is a great overlay. So it's complementary. Um, of course it can be a standalone system, but we're seeing that in, especially in the uh, European markets, Tetra continues to evolve and there's new contracts, new refreshes, and narrowband continues to grow. So what we're seeing is an opportunity now to give our end users something really exciting, and that's a, a really good, strong voice communication system that's tried and tested and delivered over the time, and now an overlay of um, LTE data that allows them to create operational efficiencies and, and, and drive future LTE enablement, but at a pace that's suitable for them.